Kybes are awesome, but they tend to be pretty frail. So if they don't one-shot their opponents, then they could be in trouble, which makes them extremely fun to use. So today, I wanted to see if it was possible to beat Pokemon Violet using only ghost types. But not just any plain old ghost types. No, today I'll be using only shiny ghost type Pokemon. To make things even harder, I've also added a bunch of extra rules. One of these rules being permadeath, and I'll be giving away any shiny Pokemon that dies in this run to you guys. So let me know in the comment section below who your favorite shiny ghost type is, and let's see if my shinies and I can conquer Paldea, or will we be exercised? Let's find out. Now, the first problem comes with the starters, as Fukoko here evolves into a ghost type, but he's shiny locked, so I'll have to come back to this hunt later. For now though, instead of hunting for the newest ghost type, I went to find the OG ghost type, Ghastly. And it only took me about three hours, and let's just say it was a bit of a delayed reaction. Oh wait. What again? Am I yeah, you got on Giratini. I would say Obese Monkey, but I'm too low. Too low rank. Is that? Oh, it is! Oh, dude, shiny. <laughs> Sorry. Yes! I had my first shiny, Pork Belly the Ghastly, but he was going to need some help to beat the first badge. And this next hunt is the reason I didn't upload a shiny video last month, since it took me over a month of hunting to find this Pokemon. But I would say it was more than worth the wait. Yes! 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 Oh! Yes! Oh my god, yes! Oh! We did it! I was the last one of this party too. Oh, finally! Shinies are pretty rare, but so is finding a game as in-depth and beautiful as today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid has hundreds of unique champions to collect, a super in-depth RPG battle system, which if you're watching this video should make you happy to hear. It also has amazing graphics and intense PvE boss fights. The pinnacle of these fights are in the Doom Tower. To climb to the top of this prison-like tower, you'll need an army of strong and unique champions. The bosses are also super tough, and some need specific mechanics to beat, like the Scarab King, who will decimate your team in an instant if you aren't prepared with shield buffs. Raid is also getting constant updates, like new champions, such as Grazor the Iron Gut. Sounds like this guy can eat anything, which I personally envy. Or maybe the handsome Elsgore Crimsonhorn is more of your style. But the main focus is bringing lore into Raid, with champion bios which bring a whole new depth to the world of Raid Shadow Legends and will let you learn all about your favorite champions. Honestly, some of my favorite parts about Raid Shadow Legends has been the designs of the champions. Even common champions look amazing and some are just... wow. With all this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get some pretty sweet bonuses like the epic champion Talia and other items that will help you on your grind. Once you've downloaded the game, come find me under the name BP Nuzlocks. I'd love to add you all. So come join me in the fun by signing up through my link down below. Thank you again Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring the video and let's get back to shiny hunting. With two team members, I think I'm ready to take on Katie. I asked Porkbelly and he seemed excited for the challenge, but Stake seemed a bit nervous. Was this justified? Would Katie prove to be our first and only challenge? Well, let's find out. Unfortunately, Porkbelly's best move was Nightshade, which does a set 15 damage. But Nimble isn't even doing 3 damage with Struggle Bug, so I can freely fire off 2 more Nightshades to take it out. I then had to Terrastalize into a Poison type for her Charutula because it had a Dark type move. But with it now doing neutral damage, I'm able to land a few Nightshades, knocking out her second Pokemon. This leaves Katie with her Ace Teddy Ursa. Porkbelly is able to hit a Nightshade for Little Chip before having to switch into Stake. He gets hit by a Terra Booster Fury Cutter on the switch, doing a good chunk of damage. Now normally, I'd be in trouble here because Fury Cutter's damage is doubled with each consecutive hit. But I could put a stop to that with Detect. From here, I cycle between using Swift for damage and Detect for protection, and I bring Tediosa down to legit 1 HP. And this is when I realize my plan wasn't flawless, as Fury Cutter brings me down to just 5 HP. One crit and I would have lost stake. 
Thankfully, I outspeed and one last swift earns me and my shiny ghost the first badge. What's that stake? If the viewers are enjoying the video, they should like and subscribe? <laughs> I totally agree. Luckily for me and my ghost types, the Stony Cliff Titan doesn't have Rock Tomb in the first phase. Or at least, he didn't use it. So Stake is able to spam x and Sensory until it eventually scurries away. But round two wasn't going to be as easy. Oh, uh, never, never mind it. It only attacked Arvin. So I guess that was super easy. I then make my way to the South Province Area 6, which might seem just a little bit out of order, because this is where you battle the seven gym leader. But I needed a TM from here. TM Sludge Bomb. I can teach this to Pork Belly and then head back to Artazone to challenge Brassius. With a new TM, Pork Belly one shots his first two Pokemon, which leaves him with Pseudo Rudo. With a base attack stat of 100, this tree could prove to be a big problem for my frail Pork Belly. And we can't one shot it because of the sturdy ability, so I need to tank at least one attack. Thankfully, Pork Belly clutches it out as Sludge Bomb brings it into sturdy range, but also poisons it. So I just needed to live this attack. And she easily tanks the hit, and one tick of poison finishes off Pseudo Wudo for my second badge. But now the game has gotten a lot harder for me and my undead shinies. With three big challenges on the way, I definitely need some new team members. My first hunt took me under 30 minutes to find and would be a huge help for the first team star boss. Oh! That's a Mickey! Let's save. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, you're so cute. That was such a quick hunt. Hey, bud. Doosh. Hey, come right again, me, bud. Oh, yes, let's go. Lamb Job here was a careful little lass and was a very welcome team member. Now normally I wouldn't use Lamb Chop here until she fully evolved, but I'm making an exception this time. With Lamb Chop taking me no time to find at all, I was ready for my next hunt. But I wasn't as lucky as I was even using the Outbreak method, but this next shiny took me over 5 hours to find. Oh! Oh! No. Where'd it go? Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're gonna save. So I don't actually don't know how many Pokeballs I got. Oh, there it is. That's awesome. Okay. Yoop, bloop. Yes. Oh, this took me so long. Hello. Yes, let's go. All right, now I know I have like a bit of a like theme going on right now with my nicknames, but I have to name this one Doc after my Discord mod. It's their favorite, it's their favorite shiny and favorite Pokemon, so I can't can't disrespect them by not naming it after them. I had already doubled my team size, but I wasn't done hunting yet. But I was going to need this next shiny if I had any chance of surviving the next three battles. Oh, is that shiny? Yes! Oh, it's such a good shiny, dude. Oh my god. Oh, it's so good looking. You are one handsome lad. This is Meat Patty. Meat Patty is adorable and I love him. He's also a certified bird hater. Unfortunately, I couldn't heal between phases. So when phase two starts, Meat Patty only has nine HP, but I just switch around and let Arvlin's Knackley do all the work. Despite doing none of the work though, I was rewarded with a very, uh, well, interesting evolution. <laughs> what the hell? I got two! I'm nuts! I don't know what my dead sick battle is. <laughs> Uh... I beat the first member of the Dark Trio with zero deaths. But now it was time for the Dark Type Team Star member, Giacomo. Meat Patty is able to deal with his first Pokemon Pine Yard with two Mud Shots, but he did take a lot of damage in return. So when the Star Mobile comes out to play, I have to send in Lamb Chop, who terrestrializes and lands a nasty low kick. Lamb Chop is then brought to just 5 HP from a Swift, but a Brick Break is able to bring the Star Mobile pretty low. I switch into Stake and thankfully the Starmobile used Swift, which Stake is immune to thanks to his ghost typing. So on the next turn he's able to tank a Wicker Torque and fire back with Comeuppance. A move that deals twice the damage taken by the user on that turn. And it is enough to knock out the Starmobile. That's one of the more threatening fights of my ghost types out of the way, but it was super close as I almost lost both Lamb Chop and Stake. But now it was time to see if I could survive the third member of the Dark Trio. Next up was the Electric Gym Leader I know. And Meat Patty again is a certified bird hater, so she knocks her Watchroll out of the sky with two Rock Tombs. I know's Luxio was second, so I had to terrestrialize to get rid of my Ghost Typing, so Bite wasn't super effective. 
This allows Patty to live an attack and bring Luxio into the red with a mud shot. Meat Patty then lives a second bite with just 12 HP to spare and finishes off the Simba wannabe with a bulldoze. But next up was Belly Bolt, a real menace for my team. Meat Patty was way too low to stay in, so I switch into Pork Belly. And even the water gun on the switch is doing some crazy damage. Pork Belly hits a confuse ray, but unfortunately, Belly Bolt lives in a constant state of confusion, so he's able to land a spark with no issues. I don't want to risk Pork Belly's life, so I bring in Doc. I get granted a free switch as Belly Bolt hits himself in confusion. I then use Growl to lower his attack as Belly Bolt hits himself again. I land a second Growl, and Belly Bolt's spark is now doing very little damage but I do get paralyzed. Unfortunately, Doc gets fully parried twice, so Ino gets a couple of free attacks off before I can confuse her Belly Bolt again. With Belly Bolt at minus three attack, I should be able to bring in Land Chop. And I get pretty lucky with Confusion again as I'm able to land a soft Cross Chop. My next Cross Chop then brings Belly Bolt into the red, but he retaliates with a boosted Spark, doing just under half of Lamb Chop's HP. Thankfully, a Brick Break on the next turn can finish it off. Last up was Ino's Ace Miss Magius, a super strong Pokemon for this early in the game, but I had a plan to defeat it. Step 1 was to switch into Stake, who is immune to Hex. I then bring in Meat Patty, who is immune to Charge Beam, and I just need to repeat this until she uses all of her Charge Beam PP. But uh, there was a problem. Thanks to his ability Illusion, Stake now looks like Lamb Chop, who can get hit by Hex. And I don't know if the AI knows I'm immune if my disguise is up, so my flawless no risk strat has suddenly become a 50 50. I stay in to scout out her attacks, but her first move is Confuse Ray, which she always had a chance of using. But eventually, she does use Hex again, so I just kept attacking, and sure enough, she never used Charge Beam. So I guess Illusion is just OP in this fight. Even though that was an easy win, I was pretty sad that I couldn't use my PP Stall strat, because my brain felt pretty big. But hey, a win is a win, and I can't complain about getting through this brutal mid-game with zero deaths. While looking at Mela's team, I realized that there was a ghost type that was introduced that completely walls her Starmobile. I also haven't been able to use this Pokemon yet, because it's a Violet exclusive, and I normally play Scarlet. So I was pretty excited for the chance to abuse this new Pokemon. Is that shiny? Oh, that is, that is. Oh, be safe, you little bugger. Yes! Let's go. I evolved Chicken Wings straight away, and it's not the best shiny around, but Sarah Ledger's design is still amazing, and with him on the team, we've got a free win against Mela. She leads the fight with Torko, and I lead with Meat Patty. I set up the rain so Meat Patty can safely take out her Volcanic Turtle with a couple of Mud Shots and a Bulldoze. Her Star Mobile was next, so I switch into Chicken Wing, and with the Flash Fire ability and Ghost Typing, Mela has no moves that can hit Chicken, so I just spam Shadow Claws until the Star Mobile breaks down. Might need to uh, ask the mechanics to add some new moves at your next service there, Mela. A good portion of my team still hasn't evolved, so I better get on that. First is Lamb Chop, who evolves into Primeape and is now one step away from becoming the ultimate Ghost type. I then use this new power up to beat the Lurking Steel Titan for another easy battle, and then after that, I get my second switch to evolve Pork Belly. Kinda sad that he loses all of his blue coloring from the previous forms, but hey, Gengar is a super strong Pokemon, so I can't complain too much. And last to evolve before Kofu is Steak, and it is sad to see my little man all grown up, but hey, at least he becomes an epic shiny Hisuian Zoroark. I mean, just look at that power. What an awesome Pokemon. With my team gaining major buffs, it was time to earn my fourth badge in a battle against Kofu. Porkbelly turns his fish into a nice smoked meal with a crit thunderbolt. And then next up was Wugtrio, who actually outspeeds Porkbelly and lands a water pulse which does confuse her, but with a quick munch of her Lumberry, she snaps out of confusion and one-shots Wugtrio with Thunderbolt. Last up was Kofu's Ace Crabono... Cra <laughs> Crab! <laughs> I knew that I wouldn't be able to one-shot it, and a Crab Hammer would definitely one-shot Porkbelly. I have no switch in, so I have to flip a coin and go for Hypnosis, and it hits! From here, two Thunderbolts are able to knock out his Ace, and that was a pretty easy battle, but if Porkbelly missed that Hypnosis, then it could have been a Bloodbath. Okay, next up is probably one of the most annoying team star fights, Atticus. And if I had any chance of beating them, I would need one of the strongest ghost types in the game. The hot topic, hard hitting, rage induced, Annihilate. 
With Lamb Chop's new buff, we might just have a chance against Atticus. Skunk Tank is up first, and Lamb Chop half shots it with a cross chop, but it does badly poison me with a toxic. Thankfully, I was holding a Pedra Berry, so it gets cured straight away. And before I can take it out, Skunk Tank hits a priority Sucker Punch, but all this really does is increase Rage Fist damage before it feigns to a Brick Break. Reverend was next, so I terastalize, and surprisingly, I do outspeed and one shot it with a crit cross job. Muck was third, but two Rage Fists knock it out, which brings us to the main threat. The Navi Starmobile. It outspeeds and hits a Noxus Torque, which does a good chunk of damage to Lamb Chop, but also boosts his Rage Fist power. So we hit just as hard in return. We tank another big attack, but with an even stronger Rage Fist, we do some insane damage. Sadly though, it's not enough to take it out, so I have to switch out Lamb Chop for Pork Belly, who absorbs the toxic spikes and shakes off a Noxus Torque. Unfortunately, the following spin out attack does way more damage than I hoped, and a Hex is only able to bring Na'Vi into the red. I don't want to risk Pork Belly's life, so I switch again, this time into Meat Patty. He tanks two spin outs, but Bulldoze leaves the Star Mobile with legit one HP. So I have to make one more switch. This time I go into Steak, who can finally finish the battle with just one more attack. Thank god we all made it out of this fight alive. We've gone from my least favourite battle to my favourite battle as it's time to fight my boy Larry. But to be honest, he is pretty easy to cheese with ghost types. His first Pokemon Kamala can only hit ghost types with Sucker Punch, but that only has 5 PP and will fail if we use a status move like Coal Mine. So, Snake just sets up to plus 6 special attack while Komola fails to touch him. It did put Steak to sleep, but once he woke up, a Hyper Voice one-shots the Drowsy Drop Bear. The Dunsparce was second, but another Hyper Voice is able to one-shot it. And last was Larry's Ace Staraptor. But Steak outspeeds again, and one-shots with Hyper Voice. It's a shame that my illusion wasn't broken, because it would have been cool to show off Zoroark's beautiful shiny but that's the price I pay for being just too goddamn good at the game. It feels like I haven't gotten a new shiny in a while, so I made a quick Ghost Encounter 2 sandwich and went off to hunt for the next team member, but it turned out to be a pretty stressful encounter. Oh, wait, that's shiny, right? Oh, that's so shiny, let's go. Bro, please, because there's like a line. He's he's over the line. Are you serious? Bro, I almost got him. Now come back. Yes, oh. Oh, this is a great, this is, this is a great shot, dude. Okay, but it's been so long that one shiny just wasn't enough. I remember back in Generation 4, trying to figure out this next Pokemon's weakness, only to find out it just didn't have any. My next hunt was Spiritomb. For this hunt, I caught the static Spiritomb on the mountains and started breeding it with a Ditto. And, oh, that was... That was so quick. God, it's such a good shiny. And the shiny fun continues as Meat Patty evolves into his final form, the beautiful Palo Sand. Now, there's been a trainer going around claiming to be the master of ghost types, and I just can't let that stand. So I gather my shiny crew and get ready to take on Rhyme. This is a double battle, so I lead with both Bacon and Spring Roll, the newest members of the team. Bacon terastalizes, and I was ready to outspeed, but Mimikyu and Bayonet both use priority moves. Shadow Sneak does little damage to Spring Roll, but Bayonet's Sucker Punch brings Bacon right into the yellow. Spring Roll Sucker Punch then fails, but Bacon's Hex claims first blood as it one-shots Bayonet. We then get the Omni Boost for terastalizing, so I'm pretty confident that Bacon could survive another Shadow Sneak. And well, I was right, but it was definitely way closer than I thought. Spring Roll then Sucker Punches Houndstone, which barely misses out on the KO, and Bacon Thunder Waves Mimikyu, paralyzing it. And to end the turn, Houndstone vanishes with Phantom Force. Predicting the Phantom Force to land on Bacon, I switch out and bring in Steak, who is immune to the attack. I predicted well as both Mimikyu's and Houndstone's attacks fail, and I finally break Mimikyu's disguise with a Hex ending the turn. Steak then finishes off Houndstone's low HP, and because of the power boost, a Hex from Spring Roll is able to take out Mimikyu, leaving Rhyme with her ace, but Steak just one-shots it with a Shadow Ball. Well, we clearly came out on top as the best ghost type trainer in Paldea. That was a super easy battle. Um, I think my game is haunted, which is definitely on theme, but damn, this is the second pork belly bug. And this time he wasn't even on the team. Well, I'll just ignore that for now and go fight Iron Treads, the Earth Titan. And Lamb Chop just kind of brick breaks it twice. And then for phase two, a combination of brick break, close combat, and then a Fire Fang from Arvin knocks out the Quaking Titan. 
Lamb Chop was a monster in this fight, but he'll be chilling on the sidelines for our next gym battle against the psychic leader Tulip. Her first Pokemon is Farigarath, and it hits a pretty soft crunch on Spring Roll as he sets up a nasty plot. Farigarath then uses Reflect, giving me a free turn to fire off a Snarl, but it lives with 1 HP. That's pretty unfortunate because now Spring Roll has to tank a second crunch before knocking out the Farigarath but he's still pretty healthy after some healing with leftovers. I have to terrestrialize into a pure ghost type for Tulip's second Pokemon Gardevoir. This allows Spring Roll to dodge the super effective damage from Dazzling Gleam, and then he can return fire with a Shadow Ball for the KO. Esparthera was third and has access to Shadow Ball and definitely outspeeds, so I have to switch into Stake, who is once again immune to the attack. Stake then outspeeds and one-shots the Bolkart Emu. Tulip's last Pokemon was Floridris, and I thought a Shadow Ball from Stake would at least be a two-hit KO. But no, it tanks the super effective attack, leaving it just above half HP and fires off a super strong Moonblast, which leaves Stake with just 40 HP left. I wanted to switch into Pork Belly, but that was a bit risky because Tulip would see the KO with both Moonblast and Psychic, making it a 50-50. So instead, I decided to switch into Chicken Wing, who resists Moonblast and takes neutral damage from Psychic. And thank God I made this play, because Tulip fires off a Psychic, which would have one-shot Gengar. Thankfully, Florges isn't too physically bulky, so a crit Shadow Claw is able to finish it off and win me a hard-fought 7th badge. Thankfully, the last gym battle was a piece of cake. If you've ever played this game and had a fire type, you just, you'd know how just sweepable Grusha is. Chicken Wing sets up a sword stance and then flame charges Grusha's Froth Moth and Bear Tick. Bitter Blade then one-shots the Titan, and last was his Altaria. But yeah, another attack from Bitter Blade was able to one-shot it. Maybe in our next run, Grusha might be a bit more of a challenge. Now, I hadn't found any shinies for a while, and on the way to my next hunt location, I saw this. Is that... Is that... Are you... You look... You look different. Are you... Hang on. <laughs> now at first, I thought this had to be a blessing. Surely my luck would increase with this such an easily found shiny. But no, this Bramblin was a curse. Because I'd be hunting for the next shiny for about 12 hours. Once again, using the outbreak method. Realistically, this should only be taking me about an hour if I'm unlucky. But 12 hours was insane. Is this? This has to be it, right? Please. No, that's it. That's it. That's it. I gotta save. Oh, thank God. Oh, it's been so long. That That is it, right? That I'm not... This isn't coping. This is it. Please. Oh my God. After finally catching some more shinies, I get ready to take down the last two Team Star bosses. Starting with Ortega. And Porkbelly absolutely wrecks the fairy boss. She terrestrializes into a pure poison type, boosting her sludge bomb, which one-shots Azumarill, Wigglytuff, and Dash Bun which leaves Otegra with his Starmobile. But it's probably the weakest Starmobile in the game, as the Steel Roller does decent damage to Porkbelly, but her Sludge Bomb destroys the Starmobile's health bar. She does get confused on the next turn, but she breaks through and finishes off Ultegra with a second Sludge Bomb. Ah, finally a peaceful Star Boss. Before I can take on the last Star Boss, I need to deal with the last Titan, Dondozo, the False Dragon. Thankfully, it's actually a pure water type for the first phase, so it's easily beaten with two discharges. Phase two was just as easy, though Bacon was doing less damage because Discharge was now doing spread damage, which, you know, weakens it depending on how many Pokemon it hits. But Bacon is basically untouched for majority of the battle, and with enough discharge spam, we defeated the Titan. Well, at least the first one, as a Tatsuguri attacks us. I paralyze the little Titan with Thunder Wave, and this boosts the base power of Hex, and from here, I just spam Hex until the Titan eventually faints. And now we've actually beaten the last Titan. Now, nothing was in my way as I challenged Eri to the final star boss battle. Eri's Toxicroak was first, but the only move that threatens Chicken Wing is Sucker Punch, so I can just set up Sword Stance until Eri runs out of Sucker Punch PP. Chicken Wing was now at max attack, so a Bitter Blade easily one-shots the Toxicroak. Lucario was second, and it actually threatened Chicken Wing with a super effective Dark Pulse, so I have to terrestrialize into a pure Fire type. This allows Chicken Wing to comfortably tank the attack. Bitter Blade then one-shots Lucario and heals Chicken Wing back to full HP. I then outspeed her Persimian and one-shot it with another Bitter Blade, which brings in a familiar face, Annihilate. It hits a hard close combat, bringing Chicken Wing below 30 HP. Thankfully, a Bitter Blade one-shots it and we heal most of the damage back. 
This leaves Eri with her Starmobile. Thankfully, it doesn't go for high horsepower first turn, instead setting up a shift gear. This allows Chicken Wing to land an insanely strong Psycho Cut, but I don't want to catch a stray high horsepower, so I switch into Meat Patty, who easily tanks the hit. Meat Patty then tanks a spin out before leaving the Starmobile with like 3 HP. Thankfully, Eri just tries to set up another shift gear, which gives Meat Patty a free turn to finish it off with one more Earth Power. And that's the last Star Boss battle of the run, which means it's time to take on some of the strongest trainers in Paldea, the Elite Four. Well, I mean, after just one last shiny hunt. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now, Sausage Roll is pretty cute, but he's going to need a huge power boost before he can take on the Elite Four. So, I start grinding by slaughtering multiple Chanseys, but then I saw one that looked a little off. Yep, I found a shiny Chansey. I'll be giving away this one to my Discord, so make sure to join our little community. The link is in the description. After a sufficient amount of grinding, Sausage Roll evolves into Drake Loak. And then finally into one of my favorite shinies and my favorite dragon type, Dragapult. God, I love this Pokemon. It's so cool and the shiny is amazing. With everyone at the level cap, it's time to take on the Elite Four, starting off with Rika. For this fight, I lead with Meat Patty, who gets instantly crit by Muddy Water from Rika's Wish Cash. Meat Patty then barely misses out on the KO with Giga Drain, leaving my pseudo mascot on just one HP. Meat Patty then has to tank a second Muddy Water, and while this does suck, Meat Patty at least gets a defense boost before taking out Wish Cash, thanks to his ability Water Compaction. This is great news for Rika's next Pokemon, Doug Trio. I do Terrastalize into a pure ground type in fear of a super effective Sucker Punch, but it just sets up a Sandstorm, so my fear was pretty unwarranted. I get a good suck off healing Meat Patty back to green HP, and thanks to the defense boost, Meat Patty man moans an Earthquake, and one more Giga Drain finishes off the Duck Trio. Camera Up was third, but Meat Patty actually outspeeds something for once and one shots it with an Earth Power. I then wall Dong Fan with my defense boost, allowing Meat Patty to take it out with a combination of Giga Drain and Shadow Ball without taking much damage in return. This leaves Rika with Clodsire, and while it did take a while, Meat Patty eventually whittles it down, taking it out with one last Earth Power. That was pretty easy, but probably would prove to be even easier. Oh yeah baby, Chicken Wing goes ham here. He sets up a sword stance and dodges a high horsepower like a Chad. From here, Bitter Blade Oko's Copraja, then Oko's Bronzong, Oko's Corviknight, and I can't one-shot Magnezone because of its sturdy ability, so I change things up just for fun and take it out with two Shadow Claws instead. This leaves Poppy with Tinker Tongue, who does have Stone Edge, but it has a good chance to miss, and Chicken Wing should live a non-critical hit. But she just ends up missing, and one last Bitter Blade ends the sweep. Chicken Wing once again showing off how broken he is. My heart was pounding, because now I had to take on the most handsome man in Paldea. Larry, who has found a new love for bird watching, but Sausage Roll doesn't care about no birds and sets up a dragon dance on Tropius as it sets up the sun. I do set up a second dragon dance, but then I get jump scared by a dragon pulse, which does insane damage. If Tropius was even a decent Pokemon, Sausage Roll would have died. Thankfully, he holds on and takes Tropius out with dragon darts. While we watch Sausage Roll tear apart the love of my life and his birds, can we talk about how nerfed the Dragon Darts animation is in this gen? I'm no Sword and Shield apologist, but damn, this move looks so much better in Gen 8. But hey, at least it's able to one-shot all of Larry's Pokemon. Sadly, though, it did have less pizzazz. From one beautiful man to another. I mean, look at his eyes, goddamn. Now, setting up on Hazel was a bit tricky, but thankfully, Sausage Roll's Terror type was Ghost, so I could just Terror to dodge any super effective dragon moves. This allows Sausage Roll to set up two Dragon Dances, but he is left on 60 HP by the end of it. Dragon Darts easily one-shots Noivern, and then it one-shots Haxorus. I was kinda scared that Dragalgi could maybe live an attack, but no, plus two was more than enough to Oko with another Dragon Darts. Flapple never worried me, however, and Dragon Dance once again just one shots it. But last was his bulkiest Pokemon, Baxcalibur. <laughs> okay, it was champion time, and I always lose a Pokemon to Gita, despite her being a pretty easy battle. But let's see if she takes any lives today. She leads with her Sparthra, but Stake is able to one shot it with a Shadow Ball. But next was King Gambit, a terrifying Dark type for my Ghost types. The only member of the team that isn't weak to Dark type moves is Lamb Chop, so I bring him in to tank a Ko. Tower cleave. Lamb Chop then outspeeds next turn and one shots King Gambit with a Brick Break. Third for Gita was 
was Gogo, which is pretty bulky and has play rough, which could probably merc Lamb Chop. So I terrestrialized to boost close combat's power to guarantee the one shot. The loser was next to hit the field, so I switch and bring in Stake. My illusion gets broken straight away, but that doesn't really matter, as Stake one shots the psychic fish with a shadow ball. It was time for Avalog, and I always have trouble with this Pokemon, I don't know why. I switch and bring in Chicken Wing, but Avalog has Crunch, so Chicken Wing loses half of his HP as soon as he hits the field. I wanted to switch again, but I was scared because I don't think any of my ghost types could tank one Crunch, let alone two. So I've got to pray that the healing from Bitter Blade will be enough to keep Chicken Wing safe. But Bitter Blade does way less damage than I thought, and the heal wasn't enough as Avalog takes out everyone's favorite snack, Chicken Wing, with an Earthquake. Losing my first Pokemon in the Gita fight of all things stings more than you will ever know. With a tear in my eye and with a heavy heart, I send in Lamb Chop, who finishes off the ice table with a close combat. After losing Chicken Wing, I was really scared to lose another Pokemon, and I wasn't confident that close combat wouldn't one-shot Gamora. And with the defense drops, I just didn't think Lamb Chop could tank an attack, so I had to switch into Meat Patty. I tank a Dazzling Gleam and then an Earth Power on the next turn, but the Earth Power dropped Meat Patty's special defense. So even though my own Earth Power is an easy two-shot, I can't stay in due to the defense drop. So I have to switch. I bring Lamb Chop back in and the Mad Lad dodges the Earth Power. So Lamb Chop outspeeds the next turn and a close combat finishes off Gamora, earning my ghost types and me the title of champion. But it wasn't without any sacrifices. I sadly had to let go of Chicken Wing. But even with this tragic death, our run wasn't over as I've got two more big battles left. First is Nimona, who I like to think is the real champion of this game, and she leads with Lycanroc and I lead with Stake. Stake sets up a nasty plot and Lycanroc sets up Stealth Rocks. I then set up a second nasty plot, but a crit drill run makes it too risky to set up a third. So I just take out Lycanroc with a Shadow Ball. Poor Mott was second, and I don't know why, but I was scared it might live a plus four Shadow Ball, which is a bit ridiculous, but hey. So I do Terrastalize to boost Shadow Ball's power, which was probably overkill as it decimates Poor Mott's HP bar. And honestly, I was still nervous that the Dunsparce might live a plus four Hyper Voice, but thankfully it cleanly Okos and one shots one of Nimona's more bulkier Mons. Next up was another bulky Mon, but a Shadow Ball from Stake is still able to one shot it. Gudra was her second last Pokemon, and I, I guess majority of Nimona's team is actually pretty bulky. Thankfully, Shadow Ball still one shots it, leaving her with her last Pokemon, Meowskarada. Now, Meowskarada is a super fast Pokemon, so if it outspeeds a Flower Trick down definitely knocks Stake out. Thankfully, Stake outspeeds and one-shots Meowskarada, beating the true champion of Paldea. But there was still one big battle left. All right, let's go sort out some daddy issues. This is my first time taking on AI Toro because I normally play Scarlet. So I was excited for the AI fight for once. I saw that his Iron Moth didn't have any moves that hit Sausage Roll for super effective damage. So I decided to set up a Dragon Dance, but Air Slash is doing a lot more damage than I thought. I'm still able to set up a second D Dance, but Air Slash brings Sausage Roll into the yellow. I was afraid that I couldn't leave a third Air Slash, so I attack. I'm able to one-shot Iron Moth, but Iron Juggalus was next. And uh, I did less damage than I thought. Oh, hell no. Oh, oh, no. God damn it. Nice! <laughs> He's flaming me, bro. I'm getting, I'm getting trash talked by an AI. I decided to bring in Spring Roll to avenge his friend. I know it's in range of a Sucker Punch, which has priority, so I'm able to finish off the Iron Murderer. Iron Thorns was up next, and it hits a nasty Stone Edge, and my Shadow Ball barely tickles the beast. I know another Stone Edge will kill, but I don't have any safe switch-ins, so I sadly have to sacrifice another friend as Spring Roll fires off one last Sucker Punch for a bit of chip damage before falling back into his Keystone, never to be revived again. I bring in Land Chop, who knocks out Iron Thorns with a Brick Break, and next was Iron Bundle. And this thing had Drill Pack, so I was actually pretty nervous. But it just sets up the snow, and despite the defense boost, Close Combat is still able to one-shot it, thank god, because that thing scares me. Iron Hands was another pretty scary Pokemon, being a bulky beast as close combat doesn't even bring it into the yellow, and it retaliates with a nasty Thunder Punch. I was ready for this close combat to be Lamb Chop's last attack, but he lives on 1 HP from another incoming Thunder Punch. So Lamb Chop can finish off his bout with a Rage Fist, leaving AI Toro with Iron Valiant. I didn't have any safe switches, 
so I stay in and let Lamb Chop fall for the team. He carried us through majority of the game, but his rage wasn't enough to hang on. His sacrifice allows Pork Belly to come in for free, and Iron Valiant does outspeed, but a Psycho Cutter isn't enough to knock her out. So, our first shiny gets the final KO with Sludge Bomb. It's kind of poetic if you think about it. With that, I've beaten Pokemon Violet using only shiny ghost types. I hope you enjoyed, and remember to stay safe out there and have a lovely day. Oh, and above me is some more videos you guys might enjoy. Anyway, see you all next time.